Morning Hat. Um, the commission made and seconded a motion to deny the special permit application. At that time, Corporation Council advised that before voting, the Planning Commission needs to follow Planning Commission Rule 4-22, which uh, um, applies when uh, not all members were present at all the hearings. Um, number one, proposed findings and facts, conclusions of law, decisions, and order must be served on, on the parties. Number two, adversely affected parties have an opportunity to file exceptions and have arguments. Number three, the Planning Commission <coughs> is to consider the whole record before making a decision. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission Chairman asks Corporation Council to prepare findings of fact, conclusions of law, and decision of order, and to arrange filing a schedule with the parties. And lastly, the parties had concerns about the proper use of contested case procedures. Uh, so Corporation Council reviewed the long-standing Planning Commission practice. With that, I'll direct uh, to our Corporation Council. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, yeah, just pick it up from there just to update you on um, what I did uh, when uh, I realized that there's some concerns about uh, contested case procedures. Um, as you know, the uh, the practice of the Planning Commission has been not to allow for uh, application for intervention uh, or for contested cases in uh, these kinds of special permits where it could be denied here or if it's approved here, it goes up to the LEC. There was an assumption that at the LEC, contested case procedures would be available. Uh, so I reviewed uh, that, that practice and looked at the LEC rules and talked to the LEC staff. And basically, what I found was uh, two things. Uh, one is that we have to keep in mind that any time there is an application, like a special permit, where the Planning Commission's decision is the final one before somebody can take an appeal, that is considered a contested case for legal purposes. And uh, that means that even if there isn't an opposition, even if there isn't an intervener, the applicant himself is a party to a contested case, and that's automatic in your rules as well. Okay. That means that uh, an applicant uh, can avail him or herself of the contested case procedures that are spelled out in the rules, such as calling witnesses, uh, subpoenaing evidence, and things like that. Uh, when I looked at the procedure that uh, the Planning Commission had been following, basically uh, telling uh, the public and the applicant that there will be no contested case procedure here, then uh, that's problematic because if an applicant for a special permit is voted down here, then their next step is to appeal to circuit court. But in order to do that, they should have been given the opportunity to use contested case procedures to make a record so that they could um, you know, file an appeal with a good record. Okay, so in this case, uh, that's something to keep in mind. The other thing I found is that when I looked at the WC rules, uh, they did not make provision for intervention and for contested cases at the LUC level, although they do specifically make provision for intervention and contested case for things like state and use boundary amendments <coughs> and anything else other than special permits. Um, and when I talked to the staff there, they basically said that it is not their normal uh, procedure to uh, conduct contested case hearings and have intervention at the LUC level. So, uh, basically, um, we cannot rely on the LUC to take care of the uh, intervention and contested case procedures. Um, and in fact, they, can, they also have the power to, to remand a case back down to the Planning Commission if they feel that the record is not complete. So, uh, with all that in mind, uh, then uh, the, I spoke with the party's attorneys and with uh, the chairperson and the parties had uh, uh, agreed that the findings of fact and conclusions of law should be put on hold in further discussion regarding uh, what uh, the next step should be, uh, you know, in view of the fact that uh, an applicant ought to have some contested case procedure rights and that the WC cannot be relied on to do that. Uh, so that's basically where we are today. Um, and we also have, as was mentioned, a motion to deny on the floor uh, 
So that also needs to be dealt with. So that's where we are right now. Thank you, Mr. Kilroy. Um, can I have the applicant and the representatives please come forward? Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Ted Hong. I reside in Hilo. I represent CBES, and with me this morning to my left is Joyce Derbyshire, who is the president. I'm sorry, Jim Hong. I'm sorry, Joan Derbyshire, who is the president of CBES. Joan Derbyshire, um, president of Community Based Educational Support Services, which is a C3 nonprofit. I live at 27 Elm Drive in Hilo. Yeah, yeah, just I'll just go ahead and just, just to get on record. John Thatcher, I'm the principal of Connections Public Charter School. I live in Calvada. Does any commissioners have any questions regarding who represents who at this point? Okay, well, um, you guys have a floor. Thank you. I'm going to start. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'd like to set out a, a couple of things, and I, I thank you for your patience and forbearance. Um, at the outset, what I'd like to take for the record is that if the Planning Commission is inclined to deny the special permit application, the applicant hereby requests as, and is entitled to a contested case pursuant to Rule 4.1 and Hawaii Revised Statute Section 2056. Now, with respect to the Commission's rules on contested case, Rule 4-1 says that, the final sentence says, with respect to this uh, contested case procedure, it shall be followed in all cases where the state statutes provide for direct appeal from the commission to the circuit court. Now there is such a statute that so provides for direct appeal to the circuit court. That is found in Hawaii by statute section 2056, uh, which speaks to specifically to special permits. In particular, subsection D says this, a denial either by the Planty County Planning Commission or by the Land Use Commission or a modification by the Land Use Commission as the case may be of the desired use shall be appealable to the circuit court of the circuit in which the land is situated and shall be made pursuant to the Hawaii Rules of Civil Procedure. So this statute triggers the contested case uh, pr process. Now, the Commission's own rules make it clear that a petition for a special permit is different from a contested case. Therefore, the argument that the hearing on the special permit is the contested case 
absolutely failed. The definition itself of contested case is found in your rule one, <coughs> which provides this. Contested case means a proceeding in which the legal rights, duties, or privileges of specific parties are required by law to be determined after an opportunity for agency hearing. That is a description and definition of contested case in your own rule, rule 1-3. So uh, if, if the commission is of the mind that the hearing on the special permit was the contested case proceeding itself, that is flawed by your own, your very own rule. It, as I go on, Rule four of the commission's rule speaks specifically to contested case proceedings. Rule six of the commission's own rules speak to special permit applications. Those rules are completely different. They are not one and the same. I think what happened in the last hearing that the commission had in January was that um, there was an attempt to collapse both the special permit hearing and the contested case procedures into one ball of wax. That is absolutely flawed reasoning. Again, clearly the rules for contested case are different from the rules for special permit. Different notice requirements uh, apply um, and the procedures are very different. Now, the rule, you do have rules the rules are silent, however, your rules are silent, however, as to what someone has to do to request a contested case. In this regard, I'd like to speak to the uh, petition for standing that was recently submitted. The connection um, and c -Bet, in an abundance of caution, not knowing exactly where the commission was going to go with the special permit, in an abundance of caution, a petition for standing was submitted. Um, the record reflects that connections um, financed the fining fee for that. I want to state for the record that that was done in an abundance of caution because the applicants didn't know what procedures were going to be followed. Notwithstanding that your own rules clearly identify the procedures relating to contested case and special uh, permit applications based on the actions that were taken at the last commission hearing. That is why that petition for standing was submitted and I wanted to address that now. Again, in an abundance of caution to preserve its due process rights. The, I've already made an oral request for a um, contested case on behalf of my client. I wanted to address several more issues just so that the commission is properly free. Now, as I said earlier, your rules are silent as to what someone has to do to request a contested case. In this regard, case law has established precedence, clear precedence. If there is no rule, due process notions of fairness absolutely apply. Um, Perry versus Planning Commission sets precedence on this. This is a Hawaii Supreme Court case decided in 1980. The citation is 52 Hawaii 666. And this is what the Hawaii Supreme Court ruled. Even if there is not a property, a clear property right um, that is present, nevertheless, an application for a special permit uh, constitutes at least at minimum a privilege Therefore, there are still due process rights that apply. These are the due process rights that apply. One, everyone has to understand what procedures will be followed. Secondly, the parties, and in particular the applicant in this case, needs the full opportunity and is entitled by law to a full opportunity to present its case. Um, thirdly, the notion of fairness of procedures. Those three anchors are what is at minimum required to be provided. Now, the public commission, the planning commission, not the applicant, carries the burden of notifying interested parties with respect to due process cases or contested case cases. 
The authority for that can be found in Hawaii Revised Statute Section 205-6 and Rule 4 of your own uh, rules with respect to contested case procedures. I think I've addressed everything that I needed to, and so I thank you for your uh, and, uh, your patience. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question. So you, you said um, uh, a petition for standing. Is this the one you're talking about, the one that we just received on March? Uh, we received it on March 7th. Is that the one you're referring to by the Jonelle Kushima? I think the date stamp there is March 4th. I think the understanding with respect to that was um, the understanding there was the as long as it was postmarked by February 28th, that would be sufficient. I, I can't speak to where that understanding came from, but that was. Uh, that was the understanding. Do you know this uh, 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 Jonel Fukushima? Is she here? Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I can add to that. Um, if I could add to that, the the school and Stevens, again, in an abundance of caution, just to preserve their contested case rights, they have uh, filled out a petition for standing in a contested case. I don't believe that's necessary because as the applicant, they have perfect standing to request a contested case. But if that's what the commission wants to solidify the record, they are prepared to submit that. However, I would ask that the $200 filing fee be waived. But, so again, in an abundance of caution, that petition for standing was submitted. We also have other petitions for standing ready to submit. Um, again, I don't feel it's necessary, but to preserve to, to preserve their due process and contested case right. I guess it's just uh, real quick, rule 4-6 of the planning commission rules. So in all proceedings with commission is direct, commission's action is directly appealed to the circuit court, which is the appearance of the The applicant here, the, the applicant and the planning director will be designated parties to the action. So I, I would agree that uh, the applicant is basically an automatic contested case party here. Does not need to uh, file any uh, requests for contested case. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning again. We are here this morning because of a procedural error, and that error has risen to the level where now it affects my client's constitutional due process rights. And the error was that because we and the planning department agreed that if there was going to be a contested case, and we've said it too on numerous occasions in, this, in these proceedings, the contested case was going to occur at the state level. It was in the notices that we sent to the community and surrounding property owners. We said it on the record a number of times. Everybody had assumed that. Now it turns out that that notice that was sent to the community, that notice that was sent to surrounding property owners, that representation that was made at the um, planning commission meetings was wrong. And you know we're not trying to point fingers or, or say it's anybody's fault. It's just that um, this is kind of a relatively unusual process, and we're still kind of finding our way. But we now know what the right way is, and the problem is everybody who is here up to this point was given the wrong information. So what's the remedy? The remedy is to withdraw the motion, and second, to deny the special permit application, approve um, Ms. Fukushima's and uh, the applicant's request for a contested case, appoint an independent third party hearings officer and allow us to proceed with the uh, contested case according to the planning commission's procedures. Then when the hearings officer uh, completes the uh, contested case proceeding, puts together his findings or her findings and back conclusions of law, they'll submit it to the planning commission, similar to what happened in the Hugo Nua case, the Pepe Gale Point uh, case, they'll submit it to the planning commission. You guys could take a look at it and either adopt it, reject it, or you know, do what you want to do. But my point is, um, given the procedural errors, um, given the notice requirements under the law, there, there is a mistake, 
And that's uh, the way I see how to correct the mistake. Um, if you choose to proceed along the lines where we're going today and um, vote on the motion to deny the permit application, um, I think any reasonable attorney would come in and say that, that you just made our day because that's, that's going to be an easy appeal. And what the Third Circuit Court is going to say, the remedy is on the appeal is you go back to the Planning Commission and they have to appoint a hearings officer and they make up the whole thing again. So instead of wasting everybody's time, I would hope that uh, the, the Planning Commission takes that into consideration. And I just want to place on the record that in the event that we are required to go to a Third Circuit Court appeal, to request a contested case or say that this was a procedural error that was made and the Planning Commission should have uh, withdrawn the denial motion um, and appointed an independent hearings officer. In the event that, that that does occur, you know, we will be asking for our attorney's fees and costs because we think that's unnecessarily <coughs> delaying the process. If the uh, chairman of the Planning Commission has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions, Mr. Hall? Um, anybody else would like to say something? Ms. Miller? Chairman, Commissioner, um, I was tasked with doing one other thing. Uh, you've heard enough of uh, legal posture and information about what for you folks. Um, what I was tasked to do was provide you folks with a quick status report of other items related to this property. Uh, what I wanted to do is give you folks a very comprehensive look at other moving pieces related to this piece of property. Uh, so um, what I submitted to the commission is just a quick update. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the general lease of the State Department of Land and Natural Resources has now been fully executed. Uh, connection now has the general lease as of February 1st. Uh, as part of that lease, um, it includes 37 different agreements and covenants that the lessee connection will have to comply with. There are two particular uh, conditions uh, that I want to point out before the commission and members of the planning department. One is condition 35. It requires the lessee to remove all trash on property within 90 days. Uh, the clock is now ticking on that uh, component of the condition. Uh, as a professional courtesy, I've been asked a uh, connection to notify the planning department when they commence with that work. Um, another one is uh, condition 37. Uh, they are required to prepare a boundary survey. Uh, I was just notified this morning that they have completed that. Um, although the report I provided you folks uh, was supposed to be done by the end of this month. They are not. Uh, the information has not been transmitted to the Department <coughs> of Land and Natural Resources. Um, another component, back, back in October, uh, the property was issued a violation for the fencing and perimeter work that was done. Part of the remedy and the cures for that violation was for them to uh, submit a reforestation or restoration plan. The applicants had done that, and they now have to commence with that work for the reforestation and restoration plan. Uh, since that time, there have been no other violations or concerns from the state side. Um, in conjunction with the fencing, there was a grading violation uh, the applicants have prepared a grading permit. They have pre received preliminary approval from the Department of Public Works. Um, <coughs> the plans are currently before the State Historic Preservation Society, uh, Preservation <coughs> Division. Unfortunately, that agency is seriously understaffed. Uh, we check probably every week, every other week, and we're just waiting for the approval. So, um, it, it, I just wanted to kind of show you folks the effort that the applicants go through <coughs> to comply with other things related to this property. So, thank you. Mr. Hall, 
Sorry. Sorry. Just for the record, um, the, on behalf of CVS, we also request a contested case here. CVS was also on the initial application, was it not? Yeah. So they would be considered applicants also as <coughs> parties to the contested case. Okay, would you, would anybody like to add? Yeah. Okay, well thank you guys very much. Um, I'd like to call, um, before I call up our testifiers, I'd like to call up um, uh, Ms. Amy Self and um, our planning director. Council in myself, I represent the planning director of the planning department. I reside in here. Um, has has um, our planning director's uh, position changed on this application? No, it has not. Uh, do you guys have any comments on uh, what the applicant is, is saying or any procedures as we as we move forward? Process is that if it's going to go to a contested case hearing, then of course notice has to go out to the um, neighbors within the surrounding properties um, to give them an opportunity to intervene. Because I don't believe that has been addressed. I don't think they've been given an opportunity to intervene. that the planning department did notify uh, everyone who was on uh, the original list of uh, who had the necessary permit uh, radius distance from the property as well as additional people. Everyone was uh, given uh, no notice of today's meeting that included the opportunity for intervention. Um, and this was mailed February 15, 2013. But the decision for a contested case hasn't been made yet. So we don't how, how are they notified since the decision hasn't even been made as to whether or not was, is today the contested case hearing or? Well, I understand that the notice um, gave people, they basically informed people that they had the right to file for a um, contested case and included the usual four. The staff would confirm that. Well, yeah, they would be intervening, yes. Okay. Would you stay around? Uh, because of uh, uh, concerns regarding uh, a procedural concerns that were raised. As part of our normal notification to surrounding property owners regarding the upcoming uh, today's meeting, uh, we included in that notice uh, an opportunity for anyone, uh, for the public to uh, uh, to file, uh, file for intervention. Along with that notice was the actual petition that was included in the, in the meeting notice. So as part of advertising today's meeting, we did include the opportunity for intervention. And that letter was mailed out of the planning department on the, February the 15th. Okay, and in that notice, were they given a deadline for when they had to submit the application by? Pursuant to rule for seven days prior to today's meeting. And the 
the planning director will not take a position on what's proposed at this point. Any questions for the planning director? Thank you, Dennis. Um, we have 18 testifiers, and just for the record, I'm going to say their names, and they're going to give it all to city. So, Ali Novak, Lynn Novak, David Camacho, Jan. Yokota, June Sakamoto, Les Sakamoto, Glenn Hara, Dean Peng, uh, Ellen Fuke, Jeff Gong, Cindy Fuke, Jeff Gong, Lauren Arugio, Margaret Arugio, Faith Sakata, Wayne Kanemoto, Jan Yokoyama, Noreen Okara, and Isha. And so, Mr. Sinihoke, please come forward. And I need to swear you in. I swear and affirm to tell the truth in front of the Winter Planning Commission today. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and where you reside and start. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sidney Kuke and I'm here kind of like um, reflecting a lot of you know, the community feelings at this point in time. I wouldn't necessarily say it's unanimous, but it seems to be like a consensus of uh, their position at this point in time. Uh, what we'd like to share you know, through a PowerPoint is it's not so much um, talking about the legal use aspect, you know, of what we've just heard over the last 10 or 15 minutes, you know, regarding context of case here, and so on and so forth, but more just to give, um, share the commission from a lady's perspective, from a community's perspective, where we are today and where we would hope that the commission could take this application. <coughs> Essentially what the community is saying is that we've had enough. We have like, uh, and what our specific request is, is we're, at, we're really asking for the commission to vote on the pending motion to deny, which is what you have before you. Now, instead of going through a contested case hearing. If we understand, like, uh, you know, very, in a very elementary way, what is the purpose of the contested case hearing? It's basically to provide the decision makers, in this case, the commissioners, but it, you know, with the most complete and relevant information needed so that you can make a decision. And it's also designed to give the parties, the applicant and the others, the opportunity pro to provide you with that relevant information. The commission rules itself provides an ability for the parties to waive or modify the contested case hearing process. And the question is like, why? And it's like, basically saying you can modify, you can waive, as long as you, know, you basically keep the essence or the spirit of the, the contested case can still be achieved through a less intimidating process. Now the process is like, first you gotta have the pre-hearing where the parties are all identified, which is what you're trying to, what is being requested today, and the scope of hearing has to be identified. Obviously, as pointed out earlier, the applicant and the planning department are automatic parties. And others would be subject to the commission's approval. Then the second phase, of course, the evidentiary portion. Then the burden of proof, as you know, like whether you're going through a contested case or even like a non-contested case situation, a rezoning application where it's non contested situation, the burden of proof always rests with the applicant to make its case because it's the applicant who's requesting the special use, not the community. It's the applicant's burden. And the, the evidentiary portion is that the applicant makes this case, all other parties are going to make the case too, the community in this case here. And there's an opportunity to provide written and oral, oral testimonies to justify one's positions, including rebuttal information. There's an opportunity to cross-examine witness. The third phase is decision-making. And if you do a contested case hearing, you need to have the findings of fact and the conclusions of law based on the record. And then, of course, the abilities of the parties to comment on the findings of fact and conclusions of law. And obviously, then the commission makes the final decision. Now, the question is, like, why is the community saying it's enough already? You know, it feels like the spirit of the contested case hearing has been met. There was ample opportunity given by, you know, by, by the commission 
There's ample opportunity by the applicant and the community to present its case. There is sufficient information on the record to fulfill the spirit of the contested case here. The possible worst case scenario of a judicial appeal is probably, as was indicated earlier, a remand with instructions for a contested case here. And the third reason why the community is saying it's enough is that, you know, we don't want, there's a festering sore, and we don't want to prolong it anymore, and it provides, a decision provides an opportunity for the healing process to begin. So why enough again, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the burden to demonstrate how its application meets the test for a special permit rests with the applicant. So the question is, was the applicant given sufficient opportunity to present its case? And the community obviously says yes. Now during this hearing, and why we say yes, because during these hearings, the applicant was given the ample opportunity, and I think the operative term here is opportunity. Opportunity to provide opening and closing arguments. They're given ample opportunity to provide written and oral testimony to support its case. Sure, they weren't able to cross-examine any of the public witnesses, but nevertheless, to supplement its case, to build a record, they had the opportunity to provide written and oral testimony. And also opportunity to provide rebuttal witnesses or testimony. The other thing is like, the applicant had been represented by two attorneys, including one from the state, who are or should be well aware of the process and the need to build a strong evidentiary record for their client's application, regardless of whether a formal contested case hearing is held or not. So if the applicant's witnesses were unable to fully testify because of their plane schedule or other schedule, it's still the applicant's responsibility to ask for continuance or provide written testimonies to support its case or rebut any testimony. So is there sufficient information on the record for the commission to make an informed decision? Community believes yes, and this is supported by the very fact that you already have a pending motion. So on the judicial appeal, which is the second reason, if this appeal, as we know, like, true, the outcome true at this point in time is unknown, but if it's denied, if the commission denies the application, the case is closed unless it goes further appeal, and it probably would be appealed if it's a denial. And if it's appealed and an appeal is sustained, as was mentioned earlier, probably the court would say, commission, you gotta hold a formal contested case hearing. So given all of that that has happened today, now, I guess the community is saying, why assume that the applicant's due process would be violated or compromised because of the absence of a formal contested case hearing? Perhaps that direction should come from the court. The third item is like, why the community is saying it's enough, is the festing sword. Everybody knows that there's a great divide between the community and the applicant. There's accusations of bullying and intimidation. There's negative publicity hurled at each other. There was actually a TRO request, which was subsequently dismissed, being made, was made against one of the residents. The community also feels that it's being yanked back and forth with all kinds of maneuvers ranging from the tag team of attorneys and now this contested case hearing request. The sword has festered too long and some kind of closure, even temporary, is needed. If appealed during the interim, there will be a needed time for some healing. You know, we all know that time can heal the wounds. Possible opportunity to see if the parties can work together, whether it's for this site or another location of the school. Going with a contested case hearing now provides the applicant with another bite of the proverbial apple, resulting in the sword to continue to fester. The community would be subjected to more stress and the need to give up more of their time, like many of us have had. So in summary, the essence of a contested case hearing has been met. There was an opportunity, again, the operative term is opportunity for the applicant and all other interested parties, persons to participate in the hearing process and build their respective records. There was sufficient information on the record for the commission to render a decision. The only missing component is the draft proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law and responses or exceptions to this draft by the applicant and others. So in summary, what the commission, the community is really requesting of the commission, notwithstanding the advice that you've been receiving from your legal counsel, is a call for the question and vote on the motion to deny and hopefully deny the application without a formal contested case hearing. 
and then you formally adopt the findings of fact conclusions of law after comments or exceptions have been received by the applicant and any other interested persons at a subsequent meeting. And this is a practice that's common with the Land Use Commission or the Board of Appeals. They make a decision and then there's, a, there's an official uh, findings of fact and conclusions of law that's accepted at the adopted right at the subsequent meeting. Essentially, the community is <coughs> enough. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Fuki? <laughs> okay, fellow commissioners, um, do you guys want to. Okay, Mr. Hong? Or... Just wanted to respond to Mr. Fuki's statements. And, you know, let me just be very clear. The ends do not justify the means. I don't care what the context is. The ends do not justify the means. If that's what Mr. Kuki has done. The Alejado case, A-L-E-G-A-D-O, basically says that where a government commission establishes rules, you have to follow the rules. And people have an expectation, the public has an expectation of right to have those commissions, boards, and agencies follow the rules. We are asking you for nothing less than to follow the rules. Let me clarify, we have not been able to call witnesses. People testify voluntarily. Um, a number of our witnesses had to leave. We had not had the opportunity, and Mr. Fuki agrees, to cross-examine witnesses. And why is that important? Because then we can test the accuracy of what they're saying. We can challenge the credibility of the individual who is providing testimony. One of the hallmarks of due process is being a is allowing the other party to ask questions, to test uh, the credibility, to challenge the allegations made, and we were denied that opportunity. We never had that opportunity. Um, we were not able to present test, uh, excuse me, evidence with respect to, we submitted documents, but we did not have to submit evidence that was taken into the record regarding uh, any of the allegations made or the counter allegations made. And the hearings that we went through, by definition, to this point, are, don't meet the definition of a contested case. And there is no case that Mr. Fuki or Judge Yoshioka or anybody can cite that would say that close is good enough. That's not the case when it comes to government boards, agencies, and commissions. Regardless of where I sit and who I represent, every citizen has a right to the process. And that's all we're asking for. And that is not what we have gotten to this point. So in terms of the remedy that we're suggesting, we feel it's appropriate. And Mr. Fuki agreed that if we carry along the line that you guys are on, the, most likely the court's going to say, you know, it's shoots and ladders. You guys got to come back, and there's got to be a contested case here. Months will have gone by. Time is gonna be going, has, has gone by. The expense to my client is going to increase in amount. So instead of doing that, let's take care of this issue now. The commission can decide and make its own recommendations based on the hearings officer's decision, like in the Pepe Care Point case, and then we move on from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. So what we have is we have um, a motion on the floor. The motion is to deny um, Commissioner Gonzalez and Commissioner Ishibashi. So we, so you know, we technically we are in the discussion portion of this hearing. So you know, if we move uh, as we move forward, you know, I just want to make a comment from a land use standpoint. Okay, I, I sympathize with the community. And, and you know uh, um, they feel bullied, and you know they feel that, uh, that they're treated unfairly, and you know the whole situation. You know, we we we've heard it for the last four hearings, um, you know. But from a land use standpoint, you know we have the state that approves this this, this special permit. 
the state needs to do that, and we have our planning department approving it. So from a land use standpoint, it's appropriate, but we need to do our job as commissioners to also listen to the community. And you know, that's, that's why we're, we're chosen as, as commissioners, and that's our jobs here. So you know, just, just want to say that as we move forward. And um, what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive session. I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session. For the purposes uh, to, to uh, consult with our attorney. For the purpose of consulting with our attorney. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys. You guys are going to have to leave really quick and we're going to have to discuss it.